Hi, let's continue our discussion on uh, motion involving translation and rotation. We have angular momentum of a moving body already discussed. Okay. Fixed axis rotation the case. Rotation and translation on the angular momentum is convenient at the same time. Okay. Today we will do the same thing for torque and kinetic energy. And then we will summarize all these things and before concluding. Angular momentum in the Kayana class, we saw that the z component of angular momentum or the component of angular momentum along the axis of rotation, along the axis of rotation, and then LZ in the LZ is equal to I0 omega plus R vector cross MV vector, the z component of R vector cross MV vector. R vector is the center of mass in the position vector, V vector is the center of mass in the velocity. Okay. I0 omega is the angular momentum around the center of mass. Okay. Angular momentum around the center of mass. Okay. Due to rotation of body around its center of mass. In our spin in the velocity. Okay. Alright. So we will do the same thing for torque. For okay. torque, the body will torque in the definition of R cos F1. Alright. So if there are n particles, so the torque on the jth particle is Rj vector cross F vector. Alright, so we know that an extended object, a rigid body, okay, for example, either this is made up of a large number of particles. Okay, we will see particle and the torque separate at calculate. Alright, so maybe the forces are different on each particle. So we can write Rj vector cross Fj vector. Okay, this is the torque on the jth particle. The total torque on this object would be the vector sum of all these individual torques. Okay, individual torques in the sum. So, we will have a sum over j equal to 1 to n, a sum over all the particles of rj vector cross fj vector. In the class, we said that we have got a center of mass here. Let this be the jth particle. Let the jth particle be the center of mass. Okay. Let this be the jth particle. Okay. Let this be the rj vector prime. Center of mass is the jth particle. Let this be the jth particle. Rj vector prime is the jth particle. Our origin could be anywhere. So this is the position vector of the center of mass, okay, which we call it as capital R vector. And this, the position vector of the particle is the is what we call as Rj vector. Okay, vector addition program, Rj vector is equal to R vector plus Rj vector prime in the Ghana. Okay, other number would be written Rj vector is written as Rj vector prime plus capital R vector. Right? And then you have this cross product with fj vector, all right? Either we can distribute this fj vector here. This is rj prime cross fj plus r cross f. So then you just take this inside or you distribute this fj vector cross product to fj vector like this. It's rj prime cross fj vector plus r vector cross f vector, okay? All right. In a, if it is capital F, it's clearly sum over J F J vector. Right? The sum over all the forces. Sum over all the forces. If it is general index, so you just sum this separately. Sum over F J. Sum sum the vector sum of the forces on all uh, the vector sum of all the forces. All right. This gives you the total force acting on the object. Okay. Or the total applied force. Okay. R vector cross F vector in the right. So we can uh, you can consider the total force as acting on the center of mass. All right. So this is the torque on the center of mass. This is the torque on the center of mass. What is this? This is the torque around the center of mass. This is the torque around the center of mass. Center of mass the origin angle. torque Rj prime cross Fj prime summed over all particles. Okay, what is this? This is the torque acting on the center of mass. Right, so the first term is the torque around the center of mass due to the various external forces. And the second term is the torque on the center of mass due to the total external force. Okay. So it's the torque on the center of mass. This is the torque around the center of mass. In the fixed axis rotation, we will tau z in the line, torque in the z component. Let's take the z component here. Okay, tau z. This is the full torque. Okay. In the fixed axis rotation, we are interested on the z component of torque, right, or the component of torque along the direction of the axis. Okay, 
So into Z component, you can into Z component, let's call it as the sum over all the Z components, we'll simply call it as tau zero vector. Okay, when the Z component is going is tau zero plus the Z component of R cross F. Okay, if it is a vector equation, the Z component, right? Z component, we will write it conveniently as tau zero. Tau zero is a Z component of the torque around the center of mass. Okay, tau zero is an interest, this is the quantity of interest for us, it's the torque, the component, the Z component of torque around the center of mass. Okay, without any kidding. Now let's start from this, uh, the orbital angular momentum. Torque in the expression of orbital angular momentum calculate here. Right? The torque is the derivative, time derivative of the uh, orbital angular momentum. Okay? Now LZ in the expression already class is starting LZ is equal to I0 omega plus R cross MV, the Z component of R cross MV. Now we will derive the expression. Okay? Now we take the time derivative, okay? DLZ by DT. Alright, so I0 number one constant down. So it's I0 d omega by dt plus r cross mv. Then the derivative we have to use the product rule. Okay, in the derivative of the product rule we can product rule we can sum you get the derivative dr vector cross so dr vector by dt cross mv vector plus okay r vector cross m dv vector by dt. Alright, so number one dr by dt is v, dr by dt and number v no, this is v vector cross mv vector, v vector cross mv vector, this is 0, v vector cross mv vector is 0, currently the random same vector, and same direction, and angle is 0, so sin theta is 0, this is 0, this is 0, okay, back in the way, it term math, dv by dt, you can write it as acceleration of the center of mass, okay, so this is i0 alpha, d omega by dt in the angular acceleration in the this is i0 alpha plus r vector cross m a, m a vector, the z component of r vector cross m a vector, right, just took the time derivative, in equivalent the tau z dana, equivalent the number tau z dana, so we can compare this, right? we can compare this, this, we can equate this, here and equation number equate angle, you see that r cross f, okay, is the m a vector, m a vector no another, uh, it is the a is the acceleration of the center of mass. So m a vector has to be f vector. M a vector has to be f vector. Alright. So we have to r vector cross f vector then you know, the z component then you know, Okay. Right. So when you compare these terms are equal, so these terms also have to be equal, and we come to the conclusion that tau zero has to be equal to i zero alpha. We come to a conclusion that tau zero is equal to I zero alpha. The torque around the center of mass, all right? The torque with respect to the center of mass is I zero alpha. Okay, so that's the result we have here. All right. We would have the rotational motion around the center of mass depends only on the torque around the center of mass. Okay. The rotational motion around the center of mass depends only on uh, on the torque around the center of mass, right? The rotational acceleration, for example, the acceleration, the angular acceleration depends only on the torque around the center of mass and it's independent of the translational motion, okay? The center of mass in average the torque and then, okay? Axis, uh, axis in the direction of the torque component and then the unique angle, it's independent of translational motion, right? Even if the translation motion is accelerating, right? Even if this V depends on time, all right, uh, even if it is accelerating, right? the accelerated chain and angulum, we can write this result tau zero is equal to I zero alpha. All right, so this equation is correct even if it is accelerating. Okay, I think this is clear. Tau zero is equal to I zero alpha. Doesn't matter whether the, the object is rolling or what you say, if it is accelerating or staying at rest or constant motion, doesn't matter. Tau zero is equal to I zero alpha. Okay. With a useful result. With that, I will repeat the reasoning if you want. Okay. We will reasoning then. We'll just repeat it for better clarity. Okay. So tau vector is equal to dl vector by dt. We take the z component. All right. Uh, isn't the z component that can we can write tau z is equal to dlz by dt. All right. In a fixed axis rotation, we already know LZ. We write LZ is equal to Z component of R cross MV plus I0 omega. We take the derivative 
right you take the derivative and when you take the derivative the first term okay the derivative of the product rule will be so first rule first term dr by dt equal to 0 i don't because mv goes right what we are left with is only r vector cross m a vector all right or r vector cross m dv by dt this we can write it as f vector okay if the center of mass is accelerating then we know what forces are acting on the center of mass fine Okay, and really d omega by dt can be written as alpha, it's the angular acceleration, the rate of change of angular speed. Okay, and then alpha. So, putting it all together, you see that dlz by dt is equal to r cross f, the z component or z component of r cross f plus i0 alpha. Okay, in number the end tau in the basic definition at kernel, all right. Okay, tau i0 alpha. Okay, so this. Uh, Tau is the basic definition in the number of conditions. Tau is equal to tau 0 plus r cos fz component. Okay, that component of r cos f. This one, this equation. Okay, this equation at compare the angle, you see that tau 0 is equal to i 0 alpha. Now, the next thing I am doing is just repeated the argument. Okay, I think it's clear. If we have two ideas, then we have torque. That is, one rate of change of angular momentum, but then the sum of all the individual torques. Right? If we have two equal angles, you should see, you we see that tau 0 has to be equal to I zero alpha. Okay. Now this is similar to the equation F equal to M A. Dimension led angle. F is equal to M A equation similar on M in the stand number. What is this? The moment of inertia. Okay, moment of inertia about the center of mass. Okay, alpha with angular acceleration, with acceleration, the linear acceleration and corresponding at angular acceleration with a z component of force in where number z component of torque. Okay, so this uh, shows the close analogy between the equation of motion, equations of motion for translation and rotational motion, even though the two modes of motion are totally independent. Right? On the translation and the rotation, we will separate it and it but the equations look very similar. Okay, this is the division, kinetic energy is the possible. Okay, this is the separation. We will say separation. And rotational motion and translational motion on the gill and we to separate parts at the same time. That was our basic idea. We right? have to do the angular moment in the earth, the torque in the earth. Now we will do it in the case of kinetic energy. Okay? The jth particle in the kinetic energy is the kinetic energy of the jth particle is half mj vj square. All right? so, the total kinetic energy is the same particle in the kinetic energy is the total sum. Okay? So, we will add the sum over j equal to 1 to n half mj vj square okay we need to the center of mass in the position vector right capital r vector the center of mass in the jth particle like the vector in a rj vector prime that come okay the particle jth particle in the position vector in a rj vector in the so we already saw that rj vector is equal to r vector plus rj vector prime right up in the time derivative and the side of the kernel you see that rj vector dot vj vector so i can write this as vj vector is equal to r vector dot you can write it as capital b vector that's the velocity of translation of the center of mass b vector plus rj vector prime dot and we to substitute here so this can be written as half sum over j mj okay this is rj vector prime dot plus v vector all right. Now, in in this regard, we have to do All right. So let's look at it again. This R J vector prime. Okay. So suppose this is the rotating object. Okay. This is the Z axis. This is the Z axis. We have the center of mass. Okay. Center of mass. This is the axis passing through the center of mass. Okay. This is the number rj vector prime no all right after some time let's say that it has moved here this is rj vector prime at an initial time this is the position vector at a later time okay but this is the drj vector prime no this is drj vector prime okay drj vector prime in the axis in the vectors in the terms in the okay this is the rho j vector prime in the this is rho j vector prime Okay, I mean, either this is actually d rho j vector prime. Okay, I think this is clear. 
This is RJ vector. Okay. This is RJ vector. RJ vector prime. This is the center of mass. Okay. This is the position vector at a later time. This is the change in the DRJ vector prime. Okay. DRJ vector prime. Where vector returns in This is RJ vector. Roj vector and the magnitude nor another, the jth particle axis in the middle perpendicular distance. Okay, the direction is from the center outwards, from the axis outwards. Okay, that is Roj vector prime. Okay, you should write a prime here. Okay, this is Roj vector prime plus D Roj vector prime. So the same vector is also D Roj vector prime. Okay, but D Rj vector prime is equal to D Roj vector prime. Okay, D Rj vector prime is equal to D Roj vector prime. So, d r j vector prime divided by d t is equal to d r j vector prime divided by d t. That is the r j prime dot. You can write as r j prime dot. It is a vector. Okay. r j vector prime. r j vector. r j prime vector dot. Okay. The derivative of r j vector prime. Okay. That is r j vector. r j vector dot rj vector prime dot number rj vector prime dot in the region okay i hope this is clear all right and then you have got uh, v plus v vector whole square in the square either v you just use a plus b whole square but you remember that this is vector these are vectors all right so you have to actually do it in the vector vector in the square no and it's the dot product of the vector with itself is not is not a vector product at the other the term symbol on it becomes rj dot square okay rj dot square and down the term it's twice all right with a half under so this is twice rj vector prime dot v vector all right in the square to consume it you get a term twice rj vector prime dot and dot it's a dot product v vector okay, remember that this is a dot product a scalar product between two vectors if you put a half full under this cancels with this two and then you have got half sum over j m j v square the summation will let them follow okay now we will know this term this is zero this is zero why is it zero and a row j vector prime a row j vector prime or another v vector in a perpendicular run all right so if you look at uh, disc rolling like this v vector goes like this when the disc is rolling this key all right disking in rotate in the summit disking in rotate in summit v vector is like that okay all right about the the center of mass moves like that whereas the velocity of this point is rho j vector dot prime okay now we can the rho j vector prime rho j vector prime dot v vector and the perpendicular these are perpendicular okay and rho j vector prime rho j vector prime dot in the e point in a perpendicular right because it's a rotation about a fixed axis all right when an object is rotating like this the velocity at any point either point in the velocity in the and a point like a tangent vector in a perpendicular right right either point in the velocity a point like a tangent vector in a perpendicular right okay don't done with a random perpendicular so this is perpendicular always and uh, so i'm sorry Ro, uh, Roger vector prime dot is perpendicular to V vector always, so this term is zero. Okay, that's fine. Right? In E term, we can get some sum over j m j rho j dot square. Okay, again I'll draw this thing here. Okay, this is rho j vector prime. Right? Is on D Roj vector prime, of course, exaggerated at an okay, and uh, <coughs> this uh, angle, this angle we can call theta, okay. We know that d Roj vector prime is equal to d Roj vector prime is equal to Roj 
uh, or let's take the magnitude. If we square the square, we need only the magnitude, so we don't have to worry about the direction. D rho j prime. Okay, we are only taking the magnitude of D rho j vector prime. Okay. No, 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 this is rho j, this length multiplied by D theta. Let's call this angle as D theta. Okay, then the length is another. This radius multiplied by the small angle D theta. Okay, but D rho j vector prime by dt in the modulus let's take the modulus okay we don't worry about the direction right now because we have squared here so this is rho j d theta by dt okay and d theta by dt is nothing but omega right it's omega all right and then the rho j dot square this line is rho j dot square right rho j vector sorry prime uh, there's also a prime uh, this square is equal to rho j omega square so this is rho j square omega square right a bit term this becomes right this term becomes half sum over j mj rho j square omega square okay well this is the same relation that you might be familiar with we say that r is equal to sorry v is equal to r omega v is equal to r omega the pala one hundred you are more familiar with this equation. In this case, uh, V in the line where we rho j dot another, R in the line where rho j another, omega is we write it as omega. All right? That's the relation that we have here. All right? Now the sum over j mj rho j square has a special name. There's no dot, there's a prime. Okay, sum over j mj rho j prime square. This has a special name. This is called the moment of inertia about the axis. Okay, this is the moment of inertia about the axis passing through the center of mass. This is what we call as I0. Okay, we term this can be written as half I0 omega square plus half mv square. Okay, all right. I think that's uh, clear. So the first term corresponds to kinetic energy of spin angular momentum. Okay. Spin angular momentum gyronola kinetic energy another. All right. Either this is the kinetic energy due to the second term is the kinetic energy due to the movement of the center of mass. Okay. All right. Now let's summarize. Okay, now we moon results now we'll discuss it. Angular momentum in the air and the torque in the air to the kinetic energy. Okay, so let's just summarize for a pure rotation around an axis and no translation. We'll add them discuss it. Pure rotation around an axis. Okay, no translation. Your rotation angle, we can write L is equal to I omega, tau is equal to I alpha, K is equal to half I omega square. In this case, there is no translation. All right. And then the case is rotation and translation. Okay. We will zero the subscript. Center of mass in the average of the quantities in the All right. The center of mass in the reference is zero on the subscript. Okay. So LZ in this case, we already found it's I zero omega. This is the angular momentum about the center of mass. Okay. It looks just like this angular momentum about the center of mass plus there's also there's also the motion of the uh, center of mass center of mass in the motion guy will return good in the don't know the r cross mv z component of r cross mv okay and the z component of torque is tau zero tau zero is what tau zero is the torque around the center of mass tau zero plus the z component of r, r cross f and tau zero itself is equal to i zero alpha right the moment of inertia about the center of mass multiplied by the angular acceleration d omega by dt. So tau zero itself is I zero alpha. As well, the kinetic energy you know, the total kinetic energy is the kinetic energy around the center of mass. Okay, due to the due to the rotation around the center of mass, and half I zero omega square plus the kinetic energy of the uh, center of mass itself. That's half m v square. All right, v is due to the movement of the center of mass right the whole object is moving all right but not translation angle in your name if there's translation the equations are very similar the equations are very similar except that this correspond to the uh, what do you say rotation around the center of mass and there's an extra term due to the translation of the center of mass or the movement in general of the center of mass okay all right so with that we'll conclude our uh, discussion on uh, the dynamics of fixed axis rotation okay we'll do we'll solve a couple of problems and uh, then we'll move on okay so thank you